Oh, here it's okay. <laughs> you, 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 won't, you won't be on. Ooh, text message. I won't put you. I won't force you on. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what's wrong? Oh, my cat's meowing at me. Oh, wait. I have this going, Jispa. Maybe of it. Yeah, you see, like, this brown fuzzy. Thing. Oh, there she goes. She just wanted some attention. She just wanted to be pet. She wanted to sniff me for some reason. Oh, folks. Why, why would she sniff me? But that's okay. She's my cat. And, <laughs> oh, shoot. I have this for a minute now. Oh, welcome. And this is kind of a new programming thing. Because NXT Live is now on free TV. It's on the USA Network. I'm going to start reviewing that as well. And I wanted to do this review because I'm going to do a compare and comparison. I've seen NXT Live now. The TV product. Tomorrow, NXT does a house show here in Daytona Beach. I want to see what differences there are. It's either going to be one of three things, and the first thing is very bad. The first thing it's going to be is that they'll keep all the big stars on TV, which makes sense. But when they do the Florida House Show Tour, all the developmental people will come here? It is important that developmental people do get their work in. But if you're going to pay 20 bucks for a ringside seat, and if I'm going to bring lady friends to wrestling matches, I want to see Adam Cole. I want to see Johnny Gargano. Well, they want to see Adam Cole, and they want to see, J see Johnny Gargano. I want to see Io Shirai. I want to see Candice LeRae. Oh, and I'd like to shout out to Candice LeRae and Johnny Gargano. Congratulations on your three-year anniversary. Remember, you might not want to make that stuff public info. Especially when Moro shouts it. I'll talk about that right now. So let's get into the show. Um, first time I've seen it. I think since they last aired it. Gee, years ago. When they had, I think it was the WrestleMania special. Or SummerSlam special. It was like WWE week. It might have been, I don't know. It was it was like some special week for WWE. I forget what it was, but it was a couple years ago. And it's like, oh, this is interesting. Then I realized that they came to town to the house shows, and I'm like, well, how much different could it really be? I'm gonna find out tomorrow. But we start off with a woman's four way. A woman's foursome. <laughs> Terrible. God, I hope I hope I don't. Well, oh, I'm not monetized anyway. Well, not yet, at least. Not after this. But um, it was Io Shirai versus Bianca Belair versus Mia Yim versus Candice LeRae. And it was a fun match. It started off with a brawl. Uh, Candice went, over, went, went after Io. Bianca Belair went after Mia Yim. Makes sense. I'll tell you what. Mia Yim has some amazing moves. Whenever I've seen Io Shirai, so he's been in tag team work. I think for a while it was... With Candice LeRae and with Kyrie Sain. But that missile drop shit she does is amazing. She can fly. And then, and then poor Candice. Like, like, Mia Yim just like flattened her out on the outside. It was vicious looking. And again, that so much stuff by Io Shri is so good. But eventually it did turn into uh, Io versus Candice. Into a grudge match. Uh, Mia Yim sent Io into Bianca Belair. That was pretty cool. Again, kind of like your spot fast. Candice already hit the reverse Rana. Uh, she, did, she did her um, a, a violence thing. And I'll, uh, it was short. I missed the ending because it was really quick and I was cooking. 
And I'll tell you what, it was for me with these four women, it was a little too short. Ken, so I did go over, which makes her the jobber to. Oh no, the opponent for Shannon Baszler. She's like, oh, I'm just gonna bury her some more, man. Wow. And this match was fun. So Candice Ray did go over. She's she's going to be the next the next opponent. The number she's the number one contender for Shannon Baszler's belt. We'll see what happens. But overall, this match was a cheeseburger. Which is pretty good considering kind of the rest the rest of the matches. Although there were some really good matches, there were some terrible matches too. Parts of it felt like a house show. Parts of it felt like a, like a TV show. Uh, I'll tell you what, the, the weird thing is the NXT wrestlers have to learn to pace themselves for TV commercials. Because for some reason, when it comes to commercial on the USA Network, it seemed like you miss like half the match. So they either have to pace it differently and by normally for like WWE shows when they pace it differently, normally it's like uh, they trade rest holds for a little bit or they do something on the outside. So I don't know. It'll, I don't necessarily want to see NXT go that way. But I mean, that's what they might have to do though. And I'm getting a little bit more accustomed to my headphones. So I'm kind of happy about that. Um, so then the next, so it was fun though. It, it's hard to complain with those four women involved. Probably Mia Yim has probably the least experience. Uh, no, Bianca Belair has the least experience. Mia Yim has probably the least ex exposure. But it was good, though. It's hard to screw that up. Then it was Sean Malwan versus Cameron Grimes. This was a squash match. I think this this match like took five seconds. Sean, when the bell rang, Sean, Sean I just said Sean ran towards Cameron Grimes. Cameron Grimes double stomped him. One, two, three. Match over. Cameron Grimes wins, which is good. Um, as, as Trevor Lee, he was kind of fun. He takes this hillbilly redneck persona. He could actually do really well with that. He comes out with like the ratty leather vest and the weird steampunkish top hat. He could get away with this, though. He has that much charisma, and he could do this. I'll tell you what, it was over before it started. It was a kind of suit match. And then for the TV show part, it was... Roderick Strong versus the Velveteen Dream. Should know the something. I don't know. I'll figure that out. Uh, so this match was actually really good. Um, the, again, there's some mind games between Roderick Strong and the Velveteen Dream. The Velveteen Dream, of course, known for that. Again, Roderick Strong is so awesome, though. Does all the backbreakers. They all look so vicious. He does do a little bit too much leg slapping, though, which has always been a criticism of mine, especially in NXT. They like to super kick everyone, and it's like, really? Super kick should be something special, but I guess it's not. Uh, the, again, double act, again, Velveteen Dream, so classic. Just a shoulder tackles, a double act handle from, from the, I think, second rope. Classic. I love my nostalgia. Uh, more of that. More is way too much. If I had to hear one more Prince song reference, I'll tell you what, Moro almost wants wants me just to turn off and just turn the volume off. I mean, of all people, the NXT announcer should, should really know this stuff. And I, I don't know. Beth Phoenix was really good. Um. James Watson, I think, was the other guy. He was actually really good, too. More was just over the top. Or was it Nigel? I forget. 
But uh, Nigel's always good and consistent. Moro's just just a tranquilo. I'll be tranquiloing too a little bit tomorrow night because after I make because because while I make my video, it's, it's Thursday and it's a beer night. Right now I don't. I just having finished off some soda. I just had some dinner. Maybe I might have a little sweet bar for dessert, but that's about it. Um, but Matt wrestling was amazing. I really like that. Strong went for the dirty pen, though it's kind of weirdly timed. But the ref was like staring right at him as he put his foot on the rope. When you do a dirty pin, you're supposed to be sneaky about it. Uh, again, that was the unprotected elbows because Velveteen Dream was tied up in the ropes. That was great. Uh, eventually, there was a ref bump. Of course, once there's a ref bump, the rest of the <laughs> an undisputed era came out. Uh, so they start to surround the ring. They each take a side, except for the back side, because. Or, or, or the one hard camera side. It's a, or whatever side that the main camera's on. You're not hidden. Uh, Adam Cole was at the ramp. Kyle Ray was on the back side. And facing the hard camera was Bobby Fish. Bobby Fish is goofy sometimes. Like old timey wrestler. Eventually, um, Roger Strong does get the end of, end of heartache. Once Dream kicks out, Dream hit the Dream Valley driver. Unfortunately, the ref was out. Uh, the ref started to come to a little bit. Dream was going to go up because he hit the Dream Valley driver a second time on Roderick Strong. Uh, he wanted to go for the for the Velveteen elbow or, or, or the Dream Dream elbow, whatever he calls it. The Macho elbow. That's what I call it. The macho elbow. Always will be the Macho elbow. Uh, so Kyle O'Reilly distracts the ref. Adam Cole, baby, punches Velveteen Dream. Second end of heartache, and now the prophecy of the un un undisputed era has come true because now they all have gold, sir. Undisputed. For life. And that was the TV show part of it. Um, thankfully, I get it via questionable means. But I still get it nonetheless, so I kind of said, you know what? I have nothing else to do for an hour. Yeah. So I watched the rest of the show. It was pretty good. Uh, it was actually better than the televised part. In fact, the Roderick Strong match before I get to it, that was a good surf and turf match. Uh, then we had Pete Dunn versus Arturo Ruas. It was a really good technical match. I'll tell you what, this was fun. It was technical. It had arm bars and reversals. Uh, that giant... Uh, that, that, arm, that arm joint lock, that, that stomp, that Pete Dune uses is amazing looking. That was like a freaking hurt. Uh, again, just really good stuff though. I enjoyed it. Again, Dune went after the feet for a while because um, Ruas is a traditional BJJ person. He, he doesn't wear shoes. He just taped up the ankles. Uh, the, the, the Capoeira or BJJ of Ruas was pretty good. I always thought it was more of a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu person versus Capoeira. I know the announcer is said Capoeira, but I'll tell you what, I've, I've stopped believing anything Morrow says. Because Morrow's just full of Prince songs and ridiculous references. And if you think Morrow's full of references too, you should let me know. But then you have that pretty good uh, finger break top triangle, and Ruas taps out. Actually, I thought it was a really fun match. It was a good match, a good story. The technical wrestling of it's amazing. The mat wrestling is so good. It was a surf and turf match. Then it was Zia Lee versus Leah. 
Zaya Lee's so quick. There was that one nasty botch though when she tried to go for for like a pop for like a springboard top rope something and she just like slipped right off the rope. Alia tries to sell like like she knocked it off. Like like she knocked her off. Ugh. Aliyah's been there for so long. She's like the NXT for life. For Aliyah second this year. Aliyah for life. Yeah, that was just a nasty looking botch. Um other than that, it was kind of quick strikes by ZLE. I'll tell you what, ZLE put some stank on those kicks. Those were not leg slaps. Those were foot hitting neck. Or foot hitting back or foot hitting their body part that you hurt. That was good stuff. Aliyah didn't really do much. Is Aliyah the next like Forever Jobber? Like Kona Reeves? Aliyah at one time had potential. But wow. She could be the next the female version of Kona Reeves. And NXT Forever. Wow. This match. Uh, it was okay. I mean, that one botch was really bad looking. Eh, it was a can of soup. Then Imperium just came in the ring and beat up someone. I have no idea who it was. The crowd started to chant Walter. Walter showed up. We are das Imperium. We must break you. And then Kushida said, My time. And you are out of time. So, of course, the Imperium went after him. So, Kushida eventually going to take on Walter. Or at least members of the Imperium. We'll see what happens. That'd be pretty cool. I wouldn't mind that. Kushida with a UK belt. Wouldn't be the first time because Rev Pro, I think, works with New Japan Pro Wrestling. So, every so often... A Japanese wrestler, I think Suzuki had either a Progress or Rev Pro belt at one time. Again, you can always feel free to either email or comment. Say either, "Oh wow, you're you're right. How do you know that?" Or 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 or, or you you Jack Cape, you're stupid. It wasn't either of those. It was something else, which it might be. I just know it's some British belt. Uh, then we had Oni Lorcan versus Leo Rush. Leo Rush is back. Yes, 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 yes. Leo Rush is alive. Uh, Oni Lorcan, he's really good. He still starts off by crushing. Poor Leo Rush. Leo Rush is so tiny. But Leo Rush can fly, though. And he can run those ropes, and he does it quick. It's like, whoa, how quick. That quick, though. Uh, uh, Lorcan, again, he just likes to strike. Those European uppercuts. Oh, that was a painful, especially against little Leo Rush. Uh, he did that deadlift, gut wrench, power bomb. Again, probably the only person he could do that. Because like, I've seen him in person. He's strong, and I'm sure. He, and he looks like he has all he has all the upper body strength, but he has tiny legs. I mean, his calves are like like I think my forearms bigger than his calf, which is kind of weird. I always feel wrestlers need that kind of bigger lower body for the base to lift people with. Because folks, always lift with your legs. That's a public service announcement from Hobo Tom. And then oh, that was a slingshot stunner off the bottom rope too, which was amazing. And Oni's Lorcan's chops. Ooh! I felt those. The single leg crab looks okay. I still like the traditional Boston crab. I'm so rubbing my chest from the chops Oni gave poor Leo. Uh, Leo slapped Oni, which is the wrong thing to do. It just made him mad. However, it made him a little bit too mad because then uh, Leo Rush did something that hit that um, hit the standing Spanish fly, which is we're not worthy. We're not worthy. And then hit an amazing frog splash. Leo Rush might have the best frog splash ever. Leo Rush wins, and now he's the number one contender for 205. This, again, was an amazing match. 
This is a surf and turf match. And then the last match was a street fight between Matt Riddle versus Killian Dane. And congratulations, Killian Dane. You find yourself a great woman. All the men are jealous of you right now. But uh, Matt Matt Riddle starts to suplex the heck out of Killian Dane, which is amazing because Killian Dane looked like he slimmed down a bit too. Although, granted, I remember Killian Dane when he was a big demo in WTPW, so it might be kind of messed up by that. Um, then they start to fight in the back, and then you see the Forgotten Sons there. They're just like chilling out. They're like, "Hey, look, a fight! Let's watch." And then they start to go out and bonk against the trunk. The truck, the, the NXT truck was there. And then there was the Imperium, like, playing cards at some, like, table outside. Why would they be outside in the Florida weather? This is Florida. You People from Florida don't like to be outside. At least I've forgotten that something that sense to be in the building. Like, Imperium has to realize Florida people this time of year do not like to be outside. In another four weeks, it'll get comfy where you can play cards outside. Not now, though. Um, and then, I don't know, for some reason, they just, they, Imperium starts speeding up Matt Riddle. The Street Profits come out to save Matt Riddle. Killian Dane's just speeding up someone random. The Forgotten Sons come out to beat at the Street Profits. And then there's like odd people just hanging out, getting involved in a street fight. And then they go back to the ring and, and, and the poor developmental people. Guys, they try to break it up to try and make it a match. But eventually it was everyone in the pool. So they all get in the ring. They all start to wrestle, wrestle. I have no idea how this ended because the feet actually cut off because they went back to the USA Network. And then it went to NXT UK, which is fun, but way too much. And Peter Dunn was even there, too. And then, that bastard. You know who I'm talking about. You, you fat wrestling fan was there. I saw him. And he'll probably be there tomorrow. And he's a jackass. And you know who you are. Don't ruin matches by saying stupid stuff. He is somewhat entertaining. But every so often you're like, dude, the show's not about you. Like Every heel that came out, he had to say something to and then he, he just spouts on about how he's been to every Annex D event. <laughs> wrestling fan! I enjoy wrestling. But you just... I don't know. You, you, you think you're a pro wrestler. You, you that wrestling fan. <laughs> and that was Annex D. So I'm going to be doing this, so I'm going to expand my broadcast or podcast or YouTube cast, uh, whatever you call it. So it'll be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, with the exception of this Thursday, because I'm going to NXT here in Daytona Beach. So if you want to see this guy, Hobo Tom, I'll probably find my NXT shirt somewhere. I think it's my Gargano shirt. Yeah, my uh, DIY shirt's here somewhere. I actually might have put it in the laundry, too. Ooh, I did the laundry. That's good. So I'll bust that shirt out. So again, if you want to see this guy, Hobo Tom, get your little shout-out. Or if you're a single lady. Yep, I'll be there probably about 06.30, because I do have to get my ticket. At work, I have to stay a little bit late to clean up the lab, get dinner at Burger King, come home, change, unwind a little bit, wrestling show, this show, and then to the gym for a little bit. 
So that put me about 11. Yeah, I could do that. Yep, so I can get stuff done tomorrow. So again, um, then, so Thursday, we'll see this guy, Hobo Tom. Here at the Daytona Beach Multicultural Center, unless something really bad happens. Uh, then Friday's going to be my typical impact show. Saturday and Sunday, there's no wrestling for a change. So I get a little rest bite until Monday. So until Thursday night, Friday morning. I'll see everyone later. Bye. And, and Chispa, be more friendly next time. Come here on YouTube with me. Oh, bye.